Now, picture this. It's 1888, Australia's centenary year. At the exhibition building in Melbourne, the Centennial Art Prize is about to be announced. Entries have come in from all over the world and speculation runs high. Will the major prize go to one of our leading artists or will an overseas entrant win? And the winner was the petite and pretty flower painter, Ellis Rowan, dressed as she always was, immaculately with tightly tucked in waist and high Victorian collar. The second prize went to Tom Roberts and the third to Frederick McCubbin. You can imagine the male huffing and puffing. Indeed, the Victorian Art Society registered a formal complaint. It was an insult, they said, to the overseas entrance to give the major prize to a flower painter, not to mention a female flower painter. Although married with one child, Ellis Rowan was seldom home, always out and about hunting for new and exotic wildflowers, first overseas, but then travelling the length and breadth of Australia, sending rare specimens for identification to Ferdinand von Muller, the founding director of the Royal Botanical Gardens in Melbourne. She visited Western Australia in the spring of 1889. Now here was a bonanza for a painter of wildflowers. The general effect is of a carefully planned garden, but it's God's garden with God's genius for infinite diversity. A staggering variety of flowering shrubs of every imaginable color, growing side by side in the semi-deserts of Western Australia. Using watercolors and gouache on colored paper, Ellis Rowan painted many of these unique varieties. She visited Queensland in the 1890s, where she loved the lush tropical vegetation. This encouraged a more vigorous approach. The flowers now often fill the page. She tells how on one occasion, she dangled by a rope over a precipice, hundreds of meters above the rainforest below to paint a tree orchid. She told tall stories to the press of braving snakes and alligators in the jungle. She was little given to understatement. She exhibited her paintings in New Bond Street and she attracted considerable attention in the press. Notice how she scratches out the bits that she doesn't like. I've been able to make out underneath this scribble that it says she's a modest person with modest prices. I think it was that last bit that she took exception to. In May of 1916, in the middle of the Great War, Ellis Rowan, now 68 years old, went to the jungles of New Guinea. These exotic jungle flowers are overwhelmingly virile and lusty, confronting even as they push their spiky leaves almost off the page. She tells us that the Amorpha phallus flower is 15 inches across and has a disgusting smell. It smells of putrid meat to attract flies, and it is, as it looks, carnivorous. Ellis Rowan tells us that the putrid smell only occurs between four o'clock in the afternoon and nine o'clock at night, which must be supper time for the Amorpha phallus. The bitterness of her male rivals lasted till well after her death in 1922. And it was the year after her death that the Australian government purchased 900 of her watercolours, which are now in the National Library of Australia. This was a tribute to the talent and tenacity of this feisty, pint-sized artist and adventurer. 